This episode of Beers from the Basement. My name's Fred. I drink beer. Well, my sh the show is actually not named properly uh, this time. This is more Beers from the Fridge, and I'm going to call it uh, Accidental Aging, Accidental Vintage, maybe. Uh, what I have is a whole bunch of beers that were in the, um, they're all kind of short, um, bottles and they were on the top shelf of my fridge way in the back and they've been there some of them for um, an awful long time and they're all pretty much beers that you wouldn't normally age so I have you know it may be that uh, uh, I end up not drinking any of them but I'm gonna at least taste them assuming that they're not uh, they don't explode or anything so the first one I'm gonna do is is a can actually it's from 21st Amendment it's called Hell or High Water, Hell, Hell or High Watermelon. Watermelon flavored wheat beer. Um, seasonal release, wheat beer fermented with watermelon concentrate with added watermelon juice, 4.9% alcohol. So canned on 829.12. So this is eight, nine, you know, eight and a half years old. Um, it was given to me by a neighbor who know, I like, knows I like beer, and he said, oh, here's a beer I like. Here's a six-pack for some favor I did for him. So I appreciate the thought. I probably drank one or two, and then I gave a couple more away. And, uh, and this one got stuck back in the fridge. Um... Okay, so uh, it is looks to be carbonated. It didn't didn't blow up. Uh, and say I lost my monitor, so I can't see if I'm pouring it correctly. So well, it's nicely carbonated. Again, it's been it's been refrigerated for all those nine years or so, eight or nine years. I poured it a little rough, but well, it's got a nice uh, nice big head. Um, again, I probably haven't had one of these since my neighbor gave me one uh, eight years ago, uh, but it's, it smells nice. Nothing, nothing wrong in the, um, in the aroma. Well, I'm surprised. This has held up better than I thought. Um, you can taste the watermelon. It's definitely oxidized. Uh, not too much, but there's a bit of cardboardy, cardboardy flavor in there, which is the bad oxidation. The good oxidation gives you sherry notes. Um, <laughs> hmm. It's it's interesting. I um, um I say I expected it to be pretty nasty, and it's actually not. I mean, I I was not a big not a big fan of this beer anyway. I generally don't like fruity beers, and and I like watermelon, but not in my beer. But you know, it's it's not that unpleasant. Um, so I am glad I don't have like another half a case sitting around somewhere. This this one is enough, and it's going to make some room in my fridge for fresher beers. Well, I'm going to think on this for a minute and try and see if I can solve my technical issue. Um, and uh, I'll be back in a minute. Okay, I'm ho hopefully... Not sure what's happening. I'm having some technical difficulties, and when you're a one-man operation, I'm the camera operator and the gaffer and the best boy and director, bottle washer, glass cleaner. 
Anyway, so, um, drinking hell or high watermelon from 21st Amendment from the summer of 2012, and, um, I'm probably not going to finish this one. I mean, it's, um, it's it's not that enjoyable a beer even to start with i think but uh, it's not a bad beer but it's just not my style but luckily i have another one and this is harar beer from ethiopia um i don't know how old this is i would guess it's from well before 2010. Um, alcohol 4.25 percent Brewed and bottled by Harar Brewery at Ethiopia. And a friend of mine gave it to me, I think pretty much as a joke. He was um, at an Ethiopian restaurant and they had this beer and he bought a couple for me. There's another one you'll see in a minute. Um, I'm assuming, I don't actually know what character set um, they use in Ethiopia. I assume that says Harar beer or the similar. Now, um, I did some, well, let's give it a try first. There's a little bit of carbonation left. And now from reading on this on some, on the websites, this is a, is an adjunct lager, though I didn't, they didn't say what kind of adjunct they use. Um, you know, usually that means corn but it could be whatever, whatever they're, you know, whatever is easily cheap to grow in Ethiopia, which I don't actually know. Well, I have a dirty glass. I'll have to talk to the glass washer. Um, it's a little darker than I would expect from the descriptions, but again, it's, I don't remember when it was, uh, when it was given to me. Um, it smells like an old beer. Smells very, very oxidized, but it's a little, it's sort of a little bit of a sherry oxidation than the cardboard, which is surprising me for a 4.2% alcohol beer. Um, well, it's beer. Um, I'm, uh, you know, there's not any particular, really just getting oxidation. Um, I don't, uh, um, you know, again, it's another one that I probably won't uh, finish. I don't know why I have the two out, but these are two paler beers that I have that I don't have another connection to. Um, it's, um, You know, I'd probably prefer it slightly t over the watermelon beer, which is pretty sad. Um, there's a little something else in the in the nose, and I can't quite I can't quite identify it. I hope it's not like some rare Ethiopian poison. Now, I couldn't find out much about the brewery except for they were bought by Heineken in 2011. Um, for, seems like not a whole lot of money. Um, so I assume they are still, uh, they're probably brewing Heineken in, in Ethiopia. Um, was a little information on the brewery itself. They have their own, their own water comes from their own well. Um, and uh, their market in the U.S., from reading the reviews I could find, mostly are, as you'd expect, at Ethiopian restaurants. Because, uh, you know, Ethiopia is not the first place you think of when it comes to beer. Okay, I'm back here with the uh, 21st Amendment, Hail or High Watermelon, and... Harar beer from Ethiopia from 2008, I think, roughly. The, the watermelon beer is from 2012. 
and um, neither of them am I going to finish. Anyway, I'm going to um, water the plants with these beers, and uh, I got a couple couple more. We'll see if uh, see if I can get a drinkable one out of the out of out of my batch. So, I'll be back in a minute. I'm back with my accidental aging beers, uh, beers from the back of my my um, fridge. And you know we had they had the Harar beer from Harar Ethiopia. Well, they also have a stout. It's the uh, it's a it looks like Hakim Stout. Um, five point five percent alcohol, so it's a stronger stout than. Uh, you know, it's strong, but um, foreign stout, I guess, uh, I guess you'd call it. Uh, the label, the cap is kind of, it's hard to see, is fairly rusted. Again, it's been in the fridge for a long time. It says Hakim Stout. So we'll give this one a try. A 5%, it probably a better chance of aging than the 4 and a quarter percent little bit of hiss. And a uh, little bit of water left from my glass. Uh, so, well, I don't know if you can see, that doesn't look very stouty. I mean, that's uh, um, very nicely carbonated, but it's... Um, Kind of red. I mean, I can see see through it. Um, I don't know if you can tell if I aim it a little bit, maybe. Um, hmm, it's got a nice malty nose. I mean, there's some malt there. Um, nice carbonation on it. Um, oxidation and maybe a little bit of metallic. Hmm. Well, it's definitely in better shape than the uh, than the lager, the Harar lager. Um, I wouldn't really call it a stout. I mean, even after all these years, there should be some stout character to it. Um, it's you know, I kind of wonder um, since the other beer was a was a lager, whether this might be bottom fermented and is actually is you know was actually a dunkel. Uh, who knows? I, I looked all over. There's nothing, nothing, no indication on the um, on the label. I suppose I could. It's imported by NTS Enterprises, Oakland, California. And I guess I could probably find out if they're still in business. Um, you know, it's a nice little label. I might keep that. So I should let you see the label. Um, certainly different. Um, I'm gonna. Well, I'm gonna let this one sit for a bit and I get a picture of it, and uh, I'll be back. And I have another stout that's uh, even older, and we'll see how it compares. Okay, I'm back here with the Hakim Stout from the Harar Brewery in Ethiopia, and while it's it's much in much better shape than the uh, the Harar beer lager, it's also not one I'm um, going to finish. It's not really a stout. There's no stout character left, if there was any, and it's really it's hard to. I'm sure it's hard for you folks to see, but it's. You know, if I hold it up to my hold it up to the light. It's uh, kind of a ruby red, not even all that dark red. So the stout I'm going to pair it with is a Sierra Nevada stout. Now, I don't know how old this is. Also, from from some of the other beers it was with, or where it was in the fridge, and by how um, rusted the cap is. I'm going to say it's probably 2000, 
2005, 2006. Um, I have a, you'll see in a minute, I have a 2007 Sierra Nevada and it has a, um, a bottling code on it just above the product code. And um, I checked my 2005 Bigfoot and 2005 Celebration and they don't have it. So the Celebration does have what looks like maybe a lot number. It's not long enough to be a bottling code. So I would say this is now they may have changed things, but I'm going to say this is before 2007. So, yeah, and I haven't had a Sierra Nevada Stout in a bottle in a long time. So let's see how we do. Again, twist off cap, so there is not a whole lot of carbonation, which is is what I would expect. The the 2005 Bigfoot and and. Um, and Celebration didn't have much carbonation either. Now that looks more like a stout to me. I'll pour it a little bit of carbonation. Um, smells like a stout and also smells oxidized, which I would expect. Well, it's definitely got stout character left to it. Um, sorry, doing this on my patio. Um, neighbors were doing something, so I paused. Um, it still has stout character. I mean, it's um, it's got a little bit of that burnt flavor I associate with Sierra Nevada stout. Um, it's, uh, if I remember, they... You know, stouts like Guinness used a roasted, unmalted roasted barley, which has a very coffee-like um, sort of almost texture and, and finish. And Sierra Nevada used black malt, which is malted and then it's it's you know practically charred. And I always found it gave a little bit more of a almost a charcoaly note, not not in a bad way, but a little, a little bit more burnt character. And I'm getting a little bit of that here. But mostly it's oxidation. Now you want to see if you hold the two up. This is the Sierra Nevada. That's the um, Ethiopian. I guess here they look very similar, but from my angle, it's definitely, uh, the Sierra Nevada is definitely uh, much darker, much blacker. I mean, it's, it's really black. I don't know, sometimes holding it that way you can see a little bit better. Sierra Nevada, Ethiopia. So, um, it's one I'm glad I opened. Um, take a pause here and see if, uh, see if I want to finish it. Um, like I say, at this point, um, so far, it's certainly the best of the best of the bunch, and considering what I have left, it may be the best of the bunch. I'm okay. I'm back with my Sierra Nevada stout from sometime before 2007, and then also an Ethiopian stout called Hakim Stout from. Harar Brewery in Ethiopia, and it's not really a stout. Um, looks to me like it might be a dunkel. Um, hard to tell. The Sierra Nevada actually isn't, you know, I wouldn't say it's enjoyable. I'd much rather have a fresh one. But certainly in, you know, had a bunch of friends to share it with, we'd probably finish it. You know, five people taking a few big sips each. It's, um, and maybe it's a bit too, too cold, um, but it's, um, th there's really not a lot in the finish. I get a little, little hint of, of burntness, a little hint of black malt, and I get oxidation and not much else. There's no, 
there's no real use character left. Um, so it's, um, you know, I could force one down, but it's really not um, all that, uh, um, you know, I have better, better beers in my, in my basement and in my current fridge. So I think I'm going to bail on this one and then we'll try the next two. Okay, I'm back with my accidentally aged beers, uh, beers from the back of the fridge. And I have two more Sierra Nevada. I have a 2007 Summerfest and a 2009 Kellerweiss. Again, both beers uh, that I wouldn't normally age, and but both beers that I very much liked um, at the time. So, in fact, I uh, used to, back in the day, I would buy a case of Summerfest every year. That was the sign of, sign of summer coming when it would show up at, you know, a few times it showed up at Costco, which meant we got a good deal on it too. So let's, we'll give the Summerfest as the oldest. We'll give that one a try first. Okay, now we have an answer to a question. You can see the cap is, is got a little bit of um, rust on it, but it is not a twist off. So, you know, one of my earlier videos, I was wondering when they actually, I didn't remember when they switched to um, twist off. So I have a 2005 with a twist off and a 2007 without. So if not 2007, then 2006. So good to know. So you watch these videos, you learn something. So I'm hoping this has a little bit more carbonation and it does, it's fairly, fairly carbonated. And uh, well, that actually looks pretty nice. This beer is, is normally, I mean, it's um, uh, not filtered. Uh, so it's a little cloudy. Trying to read if there's any um, alcohol 5%. Bottom fermented Summerfest beer. So let's say it looks looks pretty. Um, smells a little like so Summerfest. I mean, it smells like beer, but a little with some oxidation. Hmm. Um, it's actually surprised. It's a bit perfumey, which I didn't didn't expect. Not so much in the nose. I mean, I don't get perfume, but when I taste it in my mouth, I get kind of a impression of per perfume. Um, it's not. It's not objectionable. Um, it's actually reasonably drinkable. Um, um, this is by far the, the best of the ones so far. And so let's get them side by side. I have then the, the Keller Weiss, which is a, a wheat beer. Um, banana and clove, hazy golden beer. And definitely telling you it's bottle, um, it's uh, yeast in the bottle, and that it says pour two thirds and then swirl it around to get the yeast. Now, I'm probably not gonna do that to start with. Um, not much of a pop, but a little bit. And uh, let me say it's settled. I'm gonna leave the, um, the bottom. It's actually fairly clear. Um, when this beer was fresh, it was very hazy. It's a little bit of condensation there. Um, I assume all, I don't have that much in the bottom, but I guess the what's in the bottom of the bottle is probably all yeast, so I will pass on that for now. Um, not getting much in the nose. 
um, a little bit of, of phenolic, a little bit of clove. Yeah, it's interesting. I, if you gave this to me blind, I'm not sure I would guess it was wheat beer. Um, I say it may be too too cold. I didn't lift. Uh, I have these in a, a cooler um, after I took them out of the fridge. But um, yeah, it's it's kind of way too clear for uh, for a hefty bites. So. It's not bad, it's just kind of not a whole lot. The, um, this is from 2009, and the Summerfest is from 2007. And the Summerfest is a much more drinkable beer. I mean, if I had that, I mean, it's not as good as a fresh one. And I have to admit, it's been a couple years since I had a Summerfest, um, probably three years. Um, I kind of stopped going to Costco and because it just was too crowded um but uh you know it's not unenjoyable and i'll probably will finish this one i'm going to take a quick pause here and get pictures of these so you can see them better on the video and i'll be back in a second Okay, I'm back with my 2007 Sierra Nevada Summerfest, which is actually quite nice. Past its prime, but still enjoyable. And a 2009 Sierra Nevada Keller Weiss. It's supposed to be a Hefeweizen, but um, the, it seems to be fairly clear. There's a little bit of uh, little bit left in the bottle I figure that's all sediment and when I'm when I'm done I'll dump that in and see how cloudy it makes it um, I'm actually very surprised with the Summerfest that that um, uh, has held up as well and and I think the I mean again like I said at the beginning all these beers have been uh, in the refrigerator been refrigerated um, since I bought them, um, and, um, so I don't know what else to tell you. Sierra Nevada brews good beer, and I think the, I don't really know how old the stout is, but comparing the 2005 celebration, which I had, uh, and I don't know if I, that was on a video or whether that was just one I had, uh, before I did the videos, but that one had quite a bit of oxidation with the twist off cap as did the 2005 Bigfoot and the the 5 percent 2007 Summerfest with a without a twist off cap with the regular cap has got very little oxidation there's a little bit in there but but not at all compared to the ones that were two years older so I'm glad Sierra Nevada saw the light um, what I'm trying to well I'm just going to sit here I'm going to enjoy um, I'll probably finish both of these which surprises me I'm, I would have um, I would have thought that maybe I would get one out of this um, and one I really enjoy and one is um, is, is drinkable and uh so we'll be hopefully be back next next week next time with a more um, more robust uh, more interesting uh, series. Again, as always, be sure and um, if you like the video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. You can follow me at, on Twitter or Instagram uh, at Fred Waltman on both of those. I'll I'll put them in the notes as well, and I'm on Facebook as well. Um, I try and post all all the beers. Uh, my Twitter feed is 
basically nothing but beers I drink. You know, the occasional odd things. Um, occasional odd retweets. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you next time. And in the meantime, good beers to you and stay, stay well. Oh, one last thing I forgot. I promised you I would see what it looks like with the sediment. So there, oh boy, that is a lot of sediment. I'm not sure I really want to drink that, but as um, that looks now, that looks like a Hefeweizen. Um, as a, to my um, valued viewers, I'm gonna take a sip of this, but if I keel over, uh, send flowers to my funeral. Well, no, not, not a whole lot, uh, not a whole lot of wheat beer um, character in that. I'm just kind of getting a, it tastes thick. I waited too long, there's not enough left, so it's a little, it wasn't enough beer left, so it's a little bit more, but I would expect if there was some clove and banana in there, I would have gotten it. So the things I do for my viewers, Anyway, so long again.